In today's video, we are going to look at the settings menu of the mirror-mounted dash camera Vantop H612. To see a full review of this dash cam, check out the link in the description. To enter the settings menu, we can either tap this gear icon or swipe our finger down. The very first button lets us go back to the main screen. Next button is loop recording. This is where you determine how long the saved video files are going to be. Do you want your footage to be broken down into one, three or five minute increments? By default, it comes preset at one minute, which means if you have 60 minutes worth of footage, you'll have 60 one minute video files. Always pay attention to the top of the screen. It will show you your current setting. Next button, time lapse. First and foremost, this function only works with a hardwire kit that is sold separately. With this hardwire kit, the dash cam will be connected directly to the battery at all times, which means the camera will continue to record everything even when the engine is shut off. Normally, the dash cam records 30 frames per second. When you enable time lapse function, the camera will continue recording like normal when you're driving. But when you park the car and turn off the engine, it will start recording one frame every one, two or three seconds and then merge them into a 30 frames per second video. So at one frame per second, for example, 30 minute worth of filming will make a one minute time lapse video. Next button, audio with a little microphone icon. This button enables or disables sound recording. Next button, driving mode. This is where you can set the sensitivity of the impact sensor that would trigger emergency recording in case of an accident. Setting it on high triggers emergency recording even when going over bumps. So I keep mine low so that only a serious impact would trigger it. Next button, parking mode. It's the same thing. You're setting the sensitivity of the impact sensor for occasions when the car is parked and the camera is shut off. Setting it on high would make the camera wake up and record an emergency video even from closing the door. So I keep mine low. Next button, license plate. You can enter your vehicle's license plate to be displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. Next is sleep mode, not to be confused with parking mode. This is where you determine if you want the screen to turn off after one or three minutes of inactivity while the cameras continue to film. If the sleep mode is off, the screen will stay on for as long as the dash camera is running. Next button, encode. This is where you can choose a video compression format between 264, which is older and more common, and the newer 265. 265 is faster and more efficient. The only downside, you will need to install an HEVC codec, which is only like 99 cents. So not really a downside. Next button, frequency. Now we all know the power line frequency, like in our outlets, is 60 Hertz in America and some parts of Asia and 50 Hertz in Europe. But that is for alternating current. This camera runs off of a 12 volt direct current battery. So I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure what this function does. I haven't noticed any apparent difference in the fluorescent bulb flicker, for example. But since I live in the US, I set it to 60 Hertz. Next button, USB mode. In case you want to connect the camera to a computer to access video files, Connect the two through a mini B USB cable and select this option to establish connection with the computer. Next button, tap sound. Turn on and off the beeping sound when you push buttons. Next button, speaker. This is where you can turn the speaker on or off and adjust the volume when you're playing back your footage, for example. Next button, on off sound. When the camera turns on, it greets you. And when it turns off, it says goodbye. You can turn it off by using this button. Next button, streaming media. This button determines what you're going to see on the screen when the dash camera turns on. If this option is turned on, you are going to see the image from the rear view camera, kind of like what you would see in a regular mirror. 
if this option is turned off, you are going to see a split screen with images from both cameras. Next button, language. You can switch between seven languages, English, Japanese, German, French, Spanish, Italian, and Russian. Next button, date and time. Here you can set not only time and date, but also the format, how you want them to be displayed. Now, if your device is not showing the right time, even after you set it, it may be because you also need to set your time zone. Time zone is set in relation to UTC, which stands for Coordinated Universal Time. And you can Google how your local time relates to it, or better yet, compare your local time with the clock on the display and adjust the time zone to compensate for the difference. Next button, Format SD Card. This will erase everything from your memory card and prepare it for data storage. Next button, Factory Reset to bring your dash cam back to its original default settings. Next button, Speech Recognition. You can turn this function on or off and see the commands this camera can execute. Next button, Version. If you ever have to contact technical support, they may ask you about your dash cam and what version it is. It's kind of like a serial number, I'm guessing. Next button, GPS test. This is where you can see your GPS information like status, number of satellites, coordinates like latitude and longitude. Sometimes you need to wait a little bit or start driving for everything to kick on, but these numbers don't really mean much to me, so let's move on to the next button. We already covered the time zone. Next button, speed calibration. If the camera consistently shows your speed to be higher or lower than what the speedometer tells you, you can adjust it to match the real vehicle speed by adding or subtracting up to 6 miles per hour. And finally, the last button, speed unit, where you can switch between miles or kilometers per hour. So these are all of the settings available on this dash cam. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Links to all the products you saw in this video will be in the description. Share your feedback in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Good luck and take care.